All right. <clears throat> When we look, well, now that we continue looking at Riders to the Sea, um, and we're looking at it through the eyes of Aristotle, what you realize is the way the play starts, the first question you get is Nora, the younger daughter, asking, where is she? And so the play starts in the middle of things, what in um, Latin is called in media res, which be, means in the middle of things. And so it starts with something that has already happened off stage. And as the audience, we know if she's asking for someone that someone is missing. And we gradually come to understand that the someone who's not on stage at the moment is Maria. The uh, play continues. Um, here we go. Maria. The play continues. Nora asks, where is she? And Kathleen says, she's lying down, God help her, and maybe sleeping if she's able. And so the first thing we learn is that it's a woman that she's asking for and that she's lying down, she's maybe sleeping if she's able so that she is anxious in some way, not, uh, not happy. Uh, and then the next thing that we learn is Nora comes in softly and takes a bundle from under her shawl. If she's coming in softly, what mo might be her uh, motivation for coming in softly? Well, if we take the advice of backwards and forwards, uh, David Ball, David Ball says that an action in a play is both the trigger, what triggers motivation, and the heap. In other words, the consequence of that motivation. And that you can analyze a play and should analyze a play very carefully for those things. So if you look at Riders to the Sea, where is she is a question that is asked. That prompts an answer. So it's a trigger to an answer. The answer, she's lying down, God help her, and maybe sleeping, is both a heap, as in a response, but it's also a trigger because when Nora comes in, she comes in softly in order not to wake uh, the woman who is sleeping if she's able, as Kathleen says. Uh, Nora also takes a bundle uh, from her shawl, and that is a trigger for the next action of the play where Kathleen says, what is it you have? And so she wants to know what is the bundle. And that question is a trigger for Nora's response. The young priest is after bringing them. It's a shirt and a plain stocking were got of a drowned man in Donegal. So we know that a priest has brought clothes that come from a dead man and that she has taken these home. And so that wakens a question in us as viewers. Okay, so that means that maybe someone they know has died. Kathleen stops her wheel uh, with a sudden movement and leans out to listen. Oh, uh, well, if Kathleen is stopping her wheel, she must have been... Um, spinning earlier and sure enough if we look up at the stage direction will she see that she is spinning rapidly or that the wheel is uh, spinning rapidly and so she stops this movement and what is that a trigger uh, what has caused her to stop it well she leans out to listen and we realize if she wants to listen then she can't have the noise even of the spinning wheel uh, and so that would prompt her to stop um, what is she listening for? Well, we see what Nora says next. She says, we're to find out if Michael's they are. Sometime herself will be down looking by the sea. It, we find out that these clothes might belong to Michael, who is obviously someone that would be important to these women on the stage. And if we've read the stage directions, we know uh, that these women are related, that they're two sisters. And so we get that he's related to them either as a family member of some, in some way. Uh, we don't know quite how yet. And sometime herself will be down looking by the sea. If we know Irish well enough, we realize that they are talking about their mother uh, because an, a common way of referring to parents in Irish is herself for mother and himself for father. And so what we have done is we have applied the uh, theory for how to read a play from backwards and forwards, the first chapter that looks at actions. 
We have done it from the front of the play, whereas David Ball suggests that you do it from the end of the play. And that's because at the end, when you get to the end of a play, then you realize what actions have been important and in what way. Uh, because then you're able to sort of retell the story. Uh, but the important thing here is that you follow it very closely, line upon line. What's the trigger? What's the heat? The consequence. What's the trigger? What's the consequence? And often something that is a heat will also function as a trigger. Uh, those things are important. The other thing that's important is what Wallace and Shepard say, and that is that actions are sometimes in the dialogue, but they're also sometimes in the stage directions. So that when we read a play, we have to read it very carefully, both for the stage directions and for um, the dialogue. All right, I'll stop here with this one, and um, still I'm going to do a couple more of these on writer's thesis.